Okay. I'm in Slinger at the moment. Slinger is a neighborhood in Rotterdam, in the south. And that's a sect over here, by the way. And that's the subway station I've came out. So, now I'm walking towards a bus station further over there. By the way, I used to live over there when I was growing up. You know, it was a ghetto already back then. It only became worse. You know, I didn't, we didn't live here for that long, but... You know, the house that we used to live in, is, they already broke it down a few years back also. Well, this is a real ghetto, this. Wait. You know, I didn't plan to come here. Because, as you guys know, I don't like, you know, let me say better, I, I have no desire to go back to the past at all. But I need to go visit someone today and I need to take the bus from here, you see. So that's why I had to, I had to walk past here. So... Look at this place. This place is filled with drug dealing, human trafficking, yes, human trafficking. There's modern day slavery, prostitution, sodomy, men attacking men, just like in ancient Sodom and Gomorrah. By the way, it's not only this neighborhood, it's the wall of Rotterdam. Amsterdam is worse. However, Rotterdam is also quite wicked. Now, the Dutch state basically neglects this side of Rotterdam because the majority of people living here are from Moroccan and Turkish descent. So, as you see, the, the, ethnic, minor, the ethnic majority living in the Netherlands, the indigenous white Dutch people, you know, many of them hate the idea that they can't have a homogeneous Netherlands, you know, a Netherlands without any foreign people in it. So, and most of the people in the, in the politics are racist also. So that's why they neglect, you know, areas where, you know, people where, where ethnic minorities live. And that's why they dump all the ethnic minorities in certain places. You know, if you're from ethnic, and if you're not from indigenous white Dutch background, you know, there are only a few places in the Netherlands where you can get housing. So, be aware of that. You know, late after we've lived, after that we lived in Slinger, we went to Lombardijen. Lombardijen is another neighborhood in Rotterdam, m much more over there. And um, Lombardia is named after Lom the Lombardia. Um, I used to go to school around here also. In the beginning, when I was, uh, you know, 12, 13 years old. Afterwards, I transferred to another high school. You know, that high school over here was filled with violence, you know, drug dealing and, you know, and there were also some guys with homosexual tendencies that, you know, that weren't quite healthy. The Lord is good. Here we used to go to gym class when I was going to school there. You see guys, understand me well. This is not a rant about my childhood, you know. Because understand well, my childhood wasn't that great. It was darkness, it was, you know, it was miserable. But praise be to the Lord Jesus. You know, he's faithful and true. So I'm going to walk here and show you the school I've been to. I believe they changed the name of the school now.
you know, when the Lord is working in your life, often you're not, you're not aware of it. No, it's not this building here. This is another school. You know, guys, while I'm, I'm, still, I'm here anyway in, right now, so let me just give a little testimony. When I went here to school, I was, I, I was um, you know, 12, 13 years old, almost 14, you see? I wasn't, you know, I, how do you see it, you know, born again or anything, but I knew of the Bible, I knew about the Lord Jesus, and I believed in Him. And whenever I had the chance, you know, I would defend the Word of God and God's existence, because, you know, He's God. Even as unsafe back then, I still knew God is God, the Lord is Lord. And when people came with, when atheists came with, you know, with their arguments, I would say to them, no, the Lord is real. You know, because I was convicted by that, that he is real, and also that his son, Jesus Christ, is real. So, I don't know, but when I look back, the Lord did use me as a witness back then. I wasn't aware, even aware of it. So don't be discouraged, you, you know. When the Lord wants to use you for His glory, you know, He doesn't have to inform you what He's doing. Often it's the best that He doesn't in, inform you anyway, because it will work out, that will be better for you. But when the Lord decides to use you for His glory, you know, leave it on to Him. He knows what He's doing. He knows your circumstances better than you do. When I went here, it was called Nova College. Collegia in Dutch means either a lesson in a class or an institution. So it was just an high school, but they call it Nova College. See, it's still the same buildings I can see. They did renew the building because it was, it was quite old. Yes, here it is. They changed the name in New South, New South, I believe. There were a lot of fights around here, threats and everything. Well, well you know, guys, we're here anyway. And I have to say that the Lord used the, this place you know, to train me also for my anthropology studies because you know many of the indigenous Dutch fellow students I have they never had any friendships nor contacts with people from other ethnicities I did here you see I did so basically the Lord I wasn't aware of it at all but the Lord used this school here how wicked and ungodly it was to teach me lessons of, of, of anthropology years before I even decided to study cultural anthropology. So, give glory to God. He's wiser than you and you don't need to be afraid of anything. I used to walk this. Oh, there's a library over there, that huge building over there. It's the central library of, this, of Slinge. I used to go there often. I'll, I'll just wait for another bus because it's just departing. I don't mind. In this church, you know, several, you know, denominations have their services. Uh, I didn't rent the church really at that time. Things did change, I have to admit. Wait, this also changed. It has now become World Mission Society Church of God. Okay. I thought it would break this building down. They didn't. Praise be to God. I well. 
What else has changed? Not much. <clears throat> well, the area here is still a ghetto. It's the majority of people living here. They're still from you know, non-indigenous white Dutch descent. They're still, for the majority, people from the Caribbean, Moroccan and Turkish descent. You know, however, many of the youngsters around here turned into criminals, involved into human trafficking, dealing in drugs, cocaine, heroin, with mafia practices. So, things didn't end well for many people. When I, when I went here in 2000 and, let me say, when was it? 2002, I believe. No, 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 it was in 2003, 2004. It was a long, 11 years ago when I came here, there was this Turkish guy in my class, you know, his name was Kimmo. Oh, let me see. It takes about 30 minutes, well, I can walk a little bit more. You know, there was this Turkish guy in my class. His name was Kimmo. He had red, you know, orange hair. No, you don't see that often. Turkish people with red hair. At least I didn't. You know, but anyway, this guy, oh, he was cool. I could hang out with him. But even in his first year, you know, in high school, he would often stay away from, from school. He would miss classes. He would just, you know, forget his school books or he would just lie to the teachers and everything. And in the second year, you know, he, he, he disappeared. He didn't even came here anymore. And the fellow pupils told me that he became a criminal. I was thinking like, Oh my God, already a criminal? You just started high school. My, anyway, the people I went sco to school with there, I have no contact with them anymore whatsoever. No, 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 wait, that's not really correct. I have contact with one of them still. He was one of my best friends at the time. And later on, he also gave his life over to the Lord Jesus and he's safe now, so. But at the time, that we hang out together, you know. He was basically one of my only friends over there. He, you see, he didn't like the idea of God anyway. He was more into evolution and everything. And big and all, but now he's born again, praise the Lord. Maybe the Lord used me to witness to him back then without me noticing it, I don't know. You see, uh, you, you know, guys, I believe now, I'm not sure, but I believe that the Lord wanted me to make this video to show you guys a little bit more of my background, of how he used me. You know, a few months back, no, 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 not a few months, when last year, before I went to Japan, you know, when I was walking in Rotterdam Cent Central to the media market, that's electronics. It's, it's a mall to buy electronic devices, like computers and all the stuff. You know, I saw a girl that, you know, used to go to did that school also. And I was in my second year and she was in her first year. She's from Moroccan descent, I believe, you know. And I saw her back then, I believe almost 10 years had passed. You know, and she recognized me and smiled and kept on walking. She was walking together with another guy. Maybe that was her brother or her boyfriend, I don't know. Anyway, I recognized her, but she recognized me before I recognized her. Well, when I went to that school over there, I never even spoke to her. I, didn't, I don't even know her name, but you know, the Lord is wiser than you. And even your most embarrassing and even your worst moments, you know, aren't a disaster because he will use them all for his glory. And I'll tell the truth, guys, God often chooses to use us, the things 
you're embarrassed of and the things that you want to hide to glorify himself. Because God wants his creatures to trust upon his independence, not upon their own goodness, their own condition, okay? Because without him, you know, we are basically nothing, okay? Without, outside of Christ, there's only death. Anyway, so, you know, God, you know, often chooses to use us what's foolish according to the world to bring down what the world calls wise. And be comforted. When you're born again, you know, wait, hold on. Earlier in this video, I said that I wasn't born again when I went to this high school. But now that I look back, I probably already was born again. You know, I always count my born again. The, I always count the, the moment that I'm born again from the day, from the moment I was 14. And the prophet in a church, you know, mentioned that another young man needs to come forward because God has spoken to him. And I decided to, okay, I'm going to walk forward because I knew. I heard the, a spirit, the spirit talking to me. So I went forward together with other people. And since then, the growth in my walk with God began. So I always use that date when I was 14 as the moment I was born again. But now the Lord is correcting me. I was born again before that. I believe even before I went to this school. Anyway, I don't know exactly when I became born again, but um, it doesn't really matter. I didn't have, I wasn't delivered yet. I, was still, I still had a lot of baggage from ancestral curses and everything. And emotional baggage, though to the total emotional abuse, rejection, ne neglect and everything. And God used it all for his glory and for my good. So, people, you know, often we think that we have to do God a favor by making efforts to make ourselves better. No, 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 no. When you're in Christ Jesus, your, your spirit is resurrected. You've taken part of the first resurrection. So you're born again, you're saved. Now you need to be delivered, that's one other thing. However, you're saved. So you're already white as snow. So basically, it's God's business now to make sure he will turn you into the human he wants you to be. And you just have to keep on trusting him, that's all. So, you know, I hope this video helps you. You know, the Holy Spirit probably did want me to tell this to you. And um, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you.